Hey, real quick, I wanted to ask you a question. Not going to be before you long, but I was reading and then I started thinking um, about this. So a lot of you may not know the reason that I am a therapist is because I was at a funeral one day. And as I'm sitting there, the question started turning over in my mind. What are people going to say about me when I'm gone? Like whose life will I have impacted other than my children? So they put me on this quest to discover what I'm here for. And long story short, I ended up where I am. But today I was thinking, uh, what do I want my wife to say about me when I'm gone? And that made me want to ask you, uh, you know, not ask you a question. Yeah, ask you a question, but, but I want you to answer it. And then I want you to line your life up with what you say. So I'm going to give you my three. I came up with three things that... When I'm gone, this is what I want my wife to say about me. And I'm going I'm to do, you know, three things I want my children to say. Three things I want the world to be able to say, right? Um, I don't think I want to hear God say it's well done. <laughs> That's easy. But, um, so yeah. So, so for me, when, I, when I'm gone, Right. And this is an example. Right. I don't know if I'm going to die before my wife or not. But first, before I tell you my three, let me tell you the reason why. Uh, the reason why I think this is important, because it can help you see how what you what you want your wife, your husband or your wife to say may not be how you are living or how you're treating them. And maybe this will give you uh, a better framework for you to work toward that goal of being whoever that person is. So my three, when I'm gone, number one, I want my wife to say he was a genuine follower of Christ. That's, that, that's important to me. And so I live my life in a way that supports that. At least I try to, right? When I'm gone, I want my wife to say, you know what? He had a lot of flaws. He had a lot of issues. He had things in his childhood he had to work, work through. But one thing I can say about my husband, he was a genuine follower of Christ. That's what I wanted to say. Second thing I wanted to say is he was a man of integrity. That's important to me, right? I, I, I pride myself on being a man of integrity. I remember one time uh, we had bought this, this uh, electric, electric, what them things called? Electric lawnmower. And um, it was like for almost $500. This is when they first came out. It was almost $500. And one day I go to cut the grass and it wouldn't work. So I put it back in the box. Thankfully, I still had the box. Put it back in the box and I took it back to Home Depot. When I took it back to Home Depot, it was at the end of the day and they were closing. So long story short, uh, they told me, take it down to the service desk. I could take it to the service desk, leave it down there. They give me a refund. I get another one. There's a mix up where they thought I had paid for, because they gave me a refund, they thought I had paid for the new one, I literally could have walked out of the store with a brand new lawnmower for free. There was hardly nobody in the store. It was just me and my wife. I think my wife, just me and my wife. Like, no one would have cared, but I would have cared. And God saw me. And one thing I've learned, one thing I've learned in life, I think I heard Mike Epps say this, but it's true. Sometimes you do things you think nobody see, but then when you pay for it, and he was making a joke about, you know, uh, stealing some cookies, and then next thing you know, he get locked out of his house for the whole day. He's like, man, them some expensive cookies in the same way. Like, I, I want to be seen as a man of integrity, and so I live my life that way. Not in a fake way, but that's, that's I want my wife to be able to say, you know, he, he's a man of integrity. So when, when, when something comes up, that doesn't sound like integrity. My wife's first response is going to be, yeah, no, nah, that ain't, that wasn't my husband. He, he wasn't like that. Okay. And then the third thing I want my wife to say about me when I'm gone is he learned to love me as if, I'm sorry, he learned to love me for me while at the same time inspire me to be who God created me to be. Yeah. My husband loved me for me while at the same time inspiring me to be who God created me to be. That's what I want my wife to say. Now, what do you want your spouse to say when you're gone? 
Whatever that is, I want you to really think about it. Because for me, I had to think about it. There's a lot of things I want my wife to say, but if I got to narrow it down to three, these were the three I came up with. I want you to think about that. Think about, even if you guys are not on good terms right now, as long as you don't, you don't, you don't hate your spouse and you're not plotting their demise, right? If, if that's the case, y'all need to get away from each other. But even if y'all are not good right now, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered by them? Do you want to be remembered as the one who they can never come to when they're hurting? Do you want to be the one who anytime they've tried to uh, share news with you, you shot them down? Or you want you want them to be, you know, man, my wife, she never supported anything. She never supported any of my dreams. My husband never gave me a chance to express myself. Like, how do you want to be remembered? Because if 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 you want to be remembered in a positive way, but the things that you're doing are negative, I want to encourage you to change it immediately. Okay? All right, that's it. That's all I got for you. Do that. Think of three things you want to be remembered for by your spouse when you leave. And then if you want extra, you want some extracurricular activity, do it for your children. Do it for the wider world, whatever, whatever areas you want. And let that help you. Uh, let that, let that help guide the way you live your life. Okay. Because your life is not just about you. It's your responsibility to make great, but God didn't give it to you just for you. It's so that you could be a blessing to somebody else. Okay. All right. Y'all take care.